Hey guys, welcome back to Frog Fractions. In the last episode, we got a bunch of apples, we did some fractions, and now we're in court. Because apparently we've accidentally invaded a planet. Whoops. <laughs> uh, now the first thing that's happened to me. Mr. Hop, the charges against you are severe. You are accused of breaking and entering into our native habitat, Bug Moth with the intent to purloin our delicious space fruit. How do you plead? Guilty, Your Honor. Not guilty, Your Honor. Amphibious, Your Honor. You got the wrong dude. My name is Mr. Leap. Has anyone ever told you you look delicious? Oh, God! I'm surrounded by bugs! I'm gonna go with... Has anyone ever told you you look delicious? Not with that glassy-eyed stare, no. These charges carry a minimum sentence of 20 years hard labor, and there's a special arbor for this week. How would you like to become a naturalized citizen of Bug Mars? Hmm. You drive a hard bargain. I'll take the labor. It's hard to know what are the hours. How do you feel about bribes? If you'll just reach into my front pocket here. You don't have a frock pocket. I can see you, you aren't wearing pants. Whoa. You are, all you need to do is pass a test on the plan and culture or of this fine planet, or on the history and culture of this fine planet. Shall we begin? Our bug flag has four bug stripes. What do they do? What do they represent? Not what do they do. What do they represent? Mm. Hate bugs, hate bugs. Next question. On the series Bug Jersey Sore, what is Bug Snoopy's favorite flavor of ice cream? I don't, uh, really watch TV, Your Honor. You think you're better than us, huh? Well, nobody on Bug Mars has even heard of TV. Four score and twenty bug ago, Bug in Chief Bug Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Bugs that. We are blessed with which inalienable right? The right to bugs? The right to own sentient space fruit as slaves. How is that how is this even relevant? The right to refuse to satisfy against your hive mind in court. The right to parade around the court and room in only your knickers. How the hell should I know? I'm a frog. Oh god, bugs everywhere! The right to parade around the court room in only your knickers. Likely, you're only granted that right once you're a citizen. During the War of Bug 1812, General Stonewall Bug Jackson held up the nefarious frog armada single-handedly. How many mecha frogs did he crush under his wheels of his Mercedes bugs? We don't know! They hadn't invented counting back then. Enough to reach the ground. 420, I swear, they counted them twice. That's not a pot joke. I'm doing it. A shameful moment in our history. He regretted it for the rest of his life. Last question, Mr. Hop, how do you feel about fractions? I, um, was told there'd be no math on the exam. Oh man, I love them. They are an intuitive way to represent a non-integer value. Integer. I'm actually leaning slightly towards scientific notation these days. I don't know, I've never really dealt with them. I think my buzz is made of chairs. Am I? I think my chair is made of bugs, not my bug is made of chairs. <laughs> Am I made of bugs? Am I made of chairs? <laughs> I'm actually leaning slightly towards scientific notification these days. I think you're a huge fillers and I hope you die. But that is correct. I'm impressed, Mr. Hop. You, yours is the first perfect score on our fake nationalization program has ever seen. We are going to fire you into the sun. But instead, we've decided to issue you a work visa. If you'll sign here... YOLO! <laughs> hmm. What am I doing? I have no clue how to write in cursive. <gasps> I can draw on this. Whoa. 
Grr, angry eyes. This is a foot. Has anyone noticed that this looks like a foot? Like a three-toed foot? Okay, I'm done. I've ruined this. Large fractions are the best fractions. Yeah, screw these bullets. As conceived in 1632 by Portuguese printing press operator André Felipe, boxing was a gentleman's game, in which two men would square off and regale each other with stories monotonous for days on end, until one of them fell to the ground from boredom or exhaustion. Over the next few years, the new sport developed a respectable following of a few hundred local social men. Not really that respectable. Mm. Well, actually, it kind of is for a sport where you just talk to each other. I have a few hundred subscribers, and all I do is talk and play games. If I just talked, I bet I wouldn't have any. <laughs> just kind of what I'm doing now. I just uh, let's go this way. It was Felipe's son, Andre Felipe Felipe, who developed what he called the punching strategy in 1637. After seeing a schoolboy strike another in anger, causing him to fall down. When Andre Felipe Felipe challenged the then champion, British expatriate Sleepless Bill Bishop to a match, Bishop was the odds on favorite. You can imagine his surprise when, while he was describing what he had had for breakfast that morning, Andre walked up and thumped him in the neck, sending him down for the count in the parlance of our time. I'm fine. Oh, the imagery of just imagining God like, oh, today I had beans on toast with with a nice cup of tea and pop. That's amazing. I think of beans on toast. I actually go with pancakes or waffles. Wait, which country is this going? Is that even appropriate? Never had beans on toast. How was beans on toast? While it was universally agreed that the boy had violated the spirit of the game, officials were unable to find any actual rule that punching violated, hmm? and were forced to let the victory stand. This upset caused an uproar in the boxing community large enough to spill over into local newspapers, which drew the interest of many outsiders to come see what all the fuss was about. The newcomers were enthralled to engage in these borderline barbaric displays of human strength and skill, and the rest is history. After a few sports, sports school moms, single-minded about safety, added the padded gloves, of course. Wow. How... How long is this? Stop running out things to talk about. I like that squid. It's a nice squid. I think it's a squid. Was it a cuddle? This is, that's a definitely a kind of seahorse, or it looks like a seahorse at least. So that's, I believe, the end of the story, so... Alright, how, how long is this? In today's boxing enthusiasts fantasize about the newcomer that would rock the ring the way Felipe did. The classification of the modern rule set has essentially locked the punching strategy into place, but it's easy to get caught up in the fantasy. Young scholars with big dreams often enter the ring with their crazy new trick usually a variant of hypnosis, and though they've achieved the occasional victory, none of the gimmicks have been robust enough to make it to the big time. Oh man, this is... this is... this is a long one. We're a long haul, guys. Ah! Dead end! Okay, there's the frog. Weird angle made with part of the dragon's head. The real wonder, though, is that Andre Felipe's original vision of boxing is still around. Gentlemen's boxing clubs can be found in cities all over the world. You can visit one most any day of the week and see two erudite gentlemen exchanging pleasantries in the ring. Most people only come to watch a few hours of a match 
and then leave. And every once in a while you'll find amongst your elders a stout fellow, a die-hard fan, who perhaps witnessed that historic battle between Felipe and Bishop, who for love of the sport must stay to witness the last glorious seconds of wakefulness slip away, only to return to fight again another day. Awesome, we found a spaceship! So we're going to get to fly the spaceship and do stuff? Is it going to be fun? Who knows? Because as soon as it sends loading, whatever's coming up, I'm in the park. I've been Rick Duran. I'll see you guys later. Samurai, just very comments, subscribe to that good stuff next time on Frog Fractions. I guess we're doing a text adventure. I suck at text adventures.